I was on the phone with my grandfather yesterday and he's 89 and he asked me if I had any interviews coming up and I was telling him about this one and he asked about it and black holes and something, a question that he had, so I'm assuming that a lot of our listeners have is mm -hmm. he was puzzled by this concept of information because it sounds to him more like computer science than well, physics. It is, it, it, yes, yes. Um, computer science is certainly, what's the right word? Infected its way into physics in a very, very strong, I don't, infected is probably not the right word. <laughs> Invaded. Invaded. Or it wasn't the computer scientists who pushed it into physics. It was the physicists who realized many of their needs for new concepts was already there in computer science. And one of them was this idea of information. Um, but information is simply means distinctions between things. Um, you say that there's certain information that's stored in the distinction between <laughs> my book and Stephen's book. Uh, now, there are many, many pages in both books. They're different from each other. And so the number of bits of information, the number of distinctions that characterize the difference between his book and my book is large. It had, uh, both books have more than 100,000 words. Each word has maybe 10 letters. Each letter is a, a thing on the printed page with uh, lots of pixels. And pixels are made out of atoms. So all of those are distinctions. But there's a finite number of them, some very large number of distinctions uh, that, uh, that distinguish the two books. That's what information is. It's just distinctions between things. And that's what computer science is about, distinguishing different um, uh, messages, for example. Dot, 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 dash, dot, dot, dash is different than dash, dot, dash, dot, dot, dot. Morse code is what I'm talking about. Um, so when I send you a Morse code me message saying I love my cat, uh, and, I, uh, and you might have thought that I said I hate my dog, you can look at the individual pieces of the Morse code and you can recover what I said. Even though the Morse code may just seem like a bunch of garbled uh, nonsense to most people, if you know the code, if you know the code, you can recover the distinction between the two things. Okay, so what are we talking about? What distinctions are we talking about for a black hole? A black hole could be created, for example, by a star collapsing. All the material of the star go in. But a black hole could also be constructed by just a large number of particles being focused in and sent in toward a point. Enough particles, ordinary elementary particles, electrons, protons, neutrons, positrons, uh, antiparticles of all kinds, shoot them in. And when they come in, they will form a horizon. And you have two black holes which are formed in very, very different ways. Now, the classical black hole solutions, the solutions of general relativity, don't admit any distinction between these. They just are black holes. All black holes look the same. That's what drove Stephen to say information is lost. What information? The information about whether it was formed by a collapsing star or a bunch of elementary particles that came together. There's a huge distinctions between the two, but they, they appear to be lost when the black hole forms. What we've discovered is that information is not lost, it's there in the outgoing Hawking radiation. So that, uh, that seems to be what's going on. And just to translate this idea of these, so these fundamental pieces of information are called bits. Bits. And what are bit? How do you make bits rigorous as a physicist? Well, that's a, that's a difficult question. Um, sometimes a physical system is set up in a language for which bits 
not if it's a quantum mechanical system, they're called qubits, which means quantum bits, which are a little different than just the bits in your ordinary computer. But never mind that distinction for a minute. Certain physics problems are naturally amendable to being expressed in terms of bits. Other physical problems are not so natural to express them in terms of bits. Um, so sometimes the use of the language of bits in computer science and so forth is a little bit unnatural for, for certain physics problems. For example, physics problems involving continuous fields. What bits are good for is when your description involves something very discrete, some very discrete variables. Um, what it's not so good for is systems which are described by continuum mechanics. But in quantum mechanics, everything is discrete. That's the difference between classical and quantum mechanics. Everything is discrete. And so it's thought that if we worked hard enough, almost any kind of quantum system could be reduced to, uh, to a system of qubits, quantum bits. That has not been done for most... Uh, for example, it's not really been done for the standard model of particle physics. But it's thought that because of quantum mechanics, everything does reduce to, uh, to discrete information and could be represented in terms of qubits if only you worked hard enough to, uh, to translate it into that language. Mm -hmm.